The shoulder is one of the most complex joints in the human body and is capable of a wide range of motion. The T800 shoulder is a simplified version with just two degrees of freedom in the actual shoulder joint. Rotation of the upper arm is achieved further down the arm itself. Here are my thoughts on how this might actually work. Out here is the moving part of the shoulder joint. Both axes of rotation intersect at this point. This appears to be some sort of actuator or motor, perhaps electric or hydraulic. This narrow section could contain a drive shaft, and this cylindrical object looks like a gearbox which would reduce the RPM of the motor and provide more force at the arm. The dimensions look very like those of a planetary gearbox. So I'm going to attempt to construct it along these lines. The casting wasn't perfect, but it doesn't matter, as it will be machined inside and out. I decided to use a cycloidal gearbox, which will have a higher reduction ratio and torque rating and lower backlash. The pins around the edge are hardened steel dowel pins.
A second cycloidal disc goes on top. This serves to balance the rotating mass as it's offset opposite to the first one. The reduction ratio is 19 to 1. This is the pattern for the outer part of the shoulder. Casting it with these ribs in was quite ambitious and took several attempts to get right. The ribs might not be visible when finished, but help to reduce the overall weight. This motor is from a cordless drill. The spur gear reduction is 3.6 to 1, giving an overall reduction ratio of 68 to 1, or a theoretical maximum torque of around 40 newton meters, which is comparable to a human.
That's the first axis of movement done. Now for the second. I made the first stage hollow through the center. My original plan was to run a shaft through this and drive a pair of bevel gears to actuate the second axis. But I decided against this for a number of reasons. This pattern is too complicated to sand cast, so I used the Lost PLA investment casting method, similar to how I cast the skull. The shoulder joint is actually a clevis type joint. These are widely used in industry, but it's hard to assemble them without any play unless you can compress the clevis part. So I've made it look like a clevis joint, but actually it isn't. This part is not attached to this part. There's a very small gap. This means I can tighten the bolt to preload the bearings, giving smooth motion without any play. To drive this part of the shoulder, I'm using a cable. This will pass through the first mechanism and be connected to a motor and gearing further down the torso. There isn't enough space inside this tube for another actuator mechanism. What space remains in here, I'll probably use for the electronics to control the first axis. So here's the completed shoulder. And since terminators have two arms, I had to do all of this twice. <laughs> <laughs> 